Um, since still on our series on IGTS in geography, um, quickly we're going to be looking at weather instrument. So under weather, the topic weather, our lesson one will be on weather instrument. Now, so first thing we're looking at is a Stevenson screen and um, looking at the characteristics of a Stevenson screen first is on raised poles. So um, call it, it's on raised poles. Another thing is that it is painted white. It's painted white. Um, now, another thing is the Stevenson screen is made from wood. Now, it is also slated. It is slated. That's the way the woods are arranged. It's slated. Then it has an open roof. Now, why would they have this individual characteristic? So what is the function? Why it is this way? Now, first, it has open double layer roof. Um, so to allow air, air spaces. Also, it is slated so air can easily circulate inside uh, the box. It is made up of wood. Why? To avoid conduction of heat. And also, it is painted white, which helps to reflect and sunlight then it's on raised poles so that heat radiated from the earth surface will not affect the reading inside uh, the instrument in, in 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 the stevenson screen now you should also understand that uh where should the stevenson screen be kept uh, this question comes out a lot in igcs and geography now a stevenson screen should be kept in an open space uh which usually away from trees or buildings so that readings are not affected by shelters now it should be kept above grass not on concrete floor because temperature artificially high on concrete floor and usually a stevenson screen should be fenced should be in the first co fenced compound to avoid tampering from animals now it should be kept away from trees why to avoid being in a shade uh, which will affect readings so next is inside the Stevenson screen, usually uh, questions like what are the instruments you find inside the Stevenson screen. So if you look at inside the Stevenson screen here, you can see that the minimum and maximum thermometer. So minimum maximum thermometer, which is used for measuring the lowest and highest temperature in a day. Now you can also see the wet and dry bulb thermometer, which is used to measure relative humidity. Here you can see a barometer, which is used to measure um, air pressure so these instruments are found inside the stevenson screen uh, which help for this so now you see questions like why stevenson screen is used at weather stations why do we use them at weather stations one is that it helps to protect instruments from sun rays uh, so white color, which usually reflect the sun rays, we, we, what we looked at are the characteristics. It also allows true temperature of air to be measured other than artificially high temperature. Now, it also allows flow of air inside the wooden box. Uh, that is why it is slated and has an open roof. Then it also accommodates instruments such as temperature and thermometers, sorry, and other instruments. So that's why it's used now another thing why it has a roof it's because um it helps to reduce direct sunlight um it affecting the instrument uh, inside the stevenson screen now let's look at other weather instruments like air pressure um, so instrument using measuring air pressure is called the barometer now how does the barometer work uh, we have two types here but we're looking at this one more uh, a barometer has a movable needle. So this is the needle here. And or a pointer. Now, the pointer can be moved uh, to the current reading so that you can then make a comparison with the reading from the following day. So you'll be able to know the difference in air pressure. Now, why? where is it kept? Obviously, it's kept inside the Stevenson screen to keep it safe. Next is minimum and maximum temperature. Now, to measure minimum, minimum and maximum temperature, you need to use the minimum and maximum thermometers. Now, so this is how it looks like. And how does it work? It's also kept inside the Stevenson screen. Now, uh, it operates using two major fluids. In this case, we have the alcohol and we have mercury. 
alcohol and mercury. Now, these two fluid changes. It expands and contracts with change in temperature. So as temperature changes, the mercury expands or contract. Now, once the mercury expands and contracts, it will cause the needle, causing it to move inside the tube. So these two metal index, which are indicators, the two metal index are usually made up of steel indicators, are pushed up and down as the mercury contracts and relax inside the tube. Now, so these markers, which is the metal index, will stay in place at the highest and lowest temperature. So you find out that this right part of the tube measures the maximum. And this part here too, we measures the minimum. So you just check where the metal index stops and you take your reading. Now, so temperature reaches since the last reset. So this enable you enable users to monitor and record the highest and lowest temperature over a specific period of time. So that's it. So here you can easily measure the maximum temperature. And when you want to measure it, you take, take the reading from this bottom one here. Then the minimum temperature, you take the reading from this bottom one here. So the temperature is like around, the minimum temperature is around 15 degrees Celsius, while the maximum temperature is around 21, 22, 28 degrees Celsius. That's just it. It's also kept inside the Stevenson screen. Now, humidity. Measuring humidity. The instrument for measuring humidity is called a hydrometer. And usually also you call it the wet and dry bulb thermometer which is this um, here you have the wet bulb you have the dry bulb this is the wet bulb this is the dry bulb now how does it work also kept in a stevenson screen you read off the temperature of the wet and dry bulb so you take the temperature of your wet bulb and dry bulb you now work out the difference between the dry bulb temperature which is usually called and the wet bulb temperature, which is usually called the wet bulb depression. So in this case, the dry bulb is 70 degrees Celsius and the wet bulb is 60 degrees Celsius. So 70 minus 60. So uh, the wet bulb depression will now be equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Now you use the relative humidity table. You read off figure point where your wet bulb depression slash difference between the wet and the dry bulb intersect with your dry bulb temperature so here our difference is 10 so if you look at this relative humidity table the dry bulb temperature in this case dry bulb temperature was uh, 70 degrees celsius okay this particular one is not up to 70 because if in the exam you'll be given a relative humidity table. but i have an example here that we can use this for now um quickly relative humidity is calculated using the relative humidity table like the one shown below okay like this one here so an example of how relative humidity is calculated is shown now dry bulb temperature in this case is 18 wet bulb temperature is 14 now so the temperature difference or the uh, uh, wet bulb uh, um, depression will now be 18 minus 14 which is 4 degrees celsius now so if it's 4 degrees celsius you come here the difference between the wet and dry bulb is 4 degrees Celsius. Then the wet dry bulb temperature is 18. Dry bulb temperature is 18. So where do they meet? 18 and 4 meets here. So your relative humidity is 64%. Now, if you want to calculate this one, 14 minus 11 will give us 3 degrees Celsius. The, so where is 3? This is 3 here. The dry bulb temperature is 14, so 314, this is 14. Where would they meet? They meet somewhere here. So your relative humidity here is 69%. Next is, how do we measure wind speed? Measuring wind speed. Now, wind speed is measured using this instrument called the anemometer. Now, how it works, this instrument have pops and dicks or balls that revolve or rotate so you count the number of revolution uh, per minute and reading uh, you record your reading either in kilometers per hour whichever now where is it kept it is kept high off a building on on a roof top of a building uh, it is usually away from a building so it's not kept by the side it's usually kept 
at the roof top now it's usually away from trees now in an open space it's not in an open space so that it is usually exposed to wind and to avoid any form of obstruction for you to have an accurate reading next is um a wind vane a wind vane is used to measure wind direction wind speed and anemometer wind vane wind direction so how it works it's allow rotate uh it rotates to point the direction in which the wind is coming from so this one here where you have the chicken is what rotates the compass direction don't rotate so it rotates to show the direction in which the wind is coming from either north east south or west and the compass point allow the direction to be worked out so you can easily say here based on this arrow this is um, pointing uh, whether it's pointing northwest or it's pointing west whichever now it is kept the same place where an anemometer i mean so uh, yeah an anemometer is also kept so you can actually pause if you know where an anemometer is kept as we explained earlier is the same place that you need to keep um, a wind vane which is this okay so next we're looking at a rain gauge used to measure precipitation such as rainfall you use a rain gauge now how it works you, you can see that first the gauge is stood uh, stood in the ground so you insert it into the ground because this is the ground now and um this is the ground level so if it's inside the ground the funnel here will catch rain uh, or collect rain water into this bottle that is inside the gauge now the water that is poured from the bottle inside this gauge into a measuring cylinder and you read the water level in the measuring cylinder in millimeters after that you empty the water from the measuring cylinder and you set for the next day now where is it kept it is kept clear from buildings or away from buildings it's kept in an open space um it's kept clear from trees because trees act as an interceptor so it, it intercepts the water and prevent it from reaching the uh, rain gauge usually clear, kept clear away from people and animal to avoid interference is kept on grass not on concrete and on a flat land not on hilly regions and it should be kept where it can be accessible for you to measure your readings now next is measuring sunshine and the instrument using measuring sunshine is called a sunshine recorder now how it works sunshine recorder is placed in the north facing the southern hemisphere just know that it's placed north facing the southern hemisphere so you put uh, sunshine recorder in an open space not affected by shade so it will focus on the sun rays so you make uh, sure a paper card is inserted so here is a paper card inserted now so the sun rays we scotch or the sun rays we burn this paper card so we scotch or burn the paper card so what you do is you measure the length of the burn on the card and you record every 24 hours same time every day so you remove and place the paper card each day to measure the sunshine intensity then next or lastly here on weather instrument we're going to be looking at um, digital weather instrument uh, so what you need to know here is the advantage and disadvantages of using a digital weather instrument now so a digital weather instrument is usually portable and easy to use and read off and temperature data so the first thing you need to know here is what are the advantage It's usually easy to read um, it gives you instant measurement it saves time it is usually accurate it is possible portable sorry which is easy to carry and it is strong usually very strong and it's easy to reset but some of the disadvantages it has is that uh, the battery can easily go flat um, it may break is strong but it can still break now it can also be damaged easily and it also needs setting and calibrating for you to take your readings now these are advantages and disadvantages of using a digital instrument over the analog one so thank you the next lesson we're going to look at which is lesson two we're going to look at cloud types and also climatic graph for lesson two